Okay, so this character has a pretty twisted story behind it. It means to come. It's pronounced lai, like lai chi fan, come eat food, or ni guo lai, come here. And originally, this character was a picture of a stalk of wheat. And that makes sense, right? Because wheat and coming are exactly the same thing, right? Right? Okay, so to understand lai, let me show you this other character. This is mai. And this one actually does mean wheat. At the top, it's the same as lai. And at the bottom, it has this other extra thing that I'll explain in a little bit. So lai and mai, they sound kind of similar. But a few thousand years ago, in ancient Chinese, they sounded pretty much the same. And for that reason, they used one character to represent both meanings, to come and wheat. And it wasn't a big problem, because usually it's pretty clear based on the context uh, when you mean to come and when you mean wheat. But then they decided, you know what, for two different words, we really should have two different characters. Great, so they did that. They decided, okay, so wheat will use the picture of wheat. And then to come, uh, how do we do this? Okay, so at the top we'll have the picture of wheat, and this will be a hint to how the character is pronounced. And then at the bottom we'll have a picture of a foot, because usually you have to use your feet when you come. You know, the foot represents walking or moving. So the top part, wheat, represents the sound. The bottom part, foot, represents the meaning. Great, so now we have two characters, wheat and to come. And then people thought, you know what? We use the word to come all the time. It's like in the top 20 most common words. And wheat, we don't talk about it that much. It's not even in the top thousand most common words. So let's do this. Let's take the simpler character and make that character mean to come. And let's take the more complicated character, and that one will mean wheat. That way it'll be uh, more efficient when we write. So that was a really practical decision, and also really bothersome for anybody who likes things to be logical. But yeah, that's how we ended up with these two characters. And then in the 1950s, when they did character simplification in mainland China, they took the cursive form of these characters. In Chinese, you can write cursive where you kind of combine strokes, write more quickly. And they took inspiration from these cursive characters and made simplified characters based on them. If you want to learn to read and write Chinese, sign up at www.dongchinese.com.